I finally did it. I quit my six figure job in cybersecurity. In this video, we'll talk about why I quit and the things that you should consider when you're thinking about your own career. But first, welcome to the channel or welcome back. My name is John Good, and on this channel, we talk all about cybersecurity. If you enjoy the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you think of any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Also, make sure to check out the description for more training and resources. All right, let's do this. Unless you absolutely hate your job, your team, or your company, Quitting isn't exactly the most exciting thing to do. Think about it, no matter what, there's gonna be a certain level of anxiety leaving that situation where you're comfortable and going to a brand new situation where there's a lot of unknowns, regardless of how many questions that you ask in an interview. I've personally quit several jobs in my life, both in cybersecurity and in my previous career, and typically it's just an awkward situation. We'll get to why I quit shortly, but first I wanna talk about some things that I consider when I'm thinking about quitting, and I think you should consider them too. The first thing that people tend to think about is salary or just general compensation. Whenever you start a new job, no matter how well you negotiate, you're probably going to accept a salary that's lower than that company's willing to pay for your job and experience level. It's just how it is. Honestly, the negotiation and getting what you're worth is a large topic on its own. So let's save that for another discussion and assume that you're paid whatever the standard salary figure is for that time. So let's say you start a brand new cybersecurity job with no experience and you're making $60,000 per year. For this example, we're not gonna talk about equity and other compensation options because honestly, they just vary too much between the companies and they're based on a lot of different factors. Now I've broken down the options in three different types. The first one's gonna be a standard merit raise or annual increase in your salary where you're staying in the same job and that annual increase is gonna be somewhere between two to 5% per year. We're going to assume that a bonus isn't given because, again, that varies based on a lot of different factors and the company and all kinds of things. So it's really just a distraction for this conversation. So as you can see on the screen here, every year we calculated about a 3.5% annual salary increase. The second option is if you stayed at the same company, but you get some larger promotions or change departments. We're assuming that you get standard merit increases each of the first two years, and then your promotion happens at three years, for a 10% raise. The third option is if you got your merit increase for two years and then you changed companies on the third year each time and you received a 20% increase. Now you can see that between each level, especially initially, the difference isn't that much. But as you go from the beginning all the way to the end, the differences are pretty significant. Here we have $25,000 difference and then we have $73,000 difference between this bottom option and the top option. Also, if we circle back and assume that you're dramatically underpaid for your job and experience, then the increases that you can get by going to another company are gonna be significantly larger, but the idea is still the same here. Okay, something I wanna show you too is this is Glassdoor, and Glassdoor is a website for finding jobs and finding salary information about different types of jobs, but Let's ignore the fact here that it gives this average pay per year because that's probably not accurate. And there's a lot of reasons why that's not gonna be accurate. But again, let's just say you start down here on the bottom at like $60,000 per year, which is pretty reasonable. Well, if you're only getting like 3% annual raises per year over a career of like 30 years, you're not gonna get up to this higher figure. It's just not gonna happen. You're not gonna make enough increase per year. And especially when you look at this really high figure, this $433,000 figure, there's no way that you're going to get there at 3% increase per year, maybe even for the rest of your life. So you've got to make some big jumps every couple years, every five years, every 10 years. You know, at some point, you've got to make those big jumps if you actually want to get to some of these higher level salaries that exist. So just keep that in mind. Those 3% increases aren't going to help you get to the 212000 the 433000 which might kind of influence why you got into this career field in the first place is to get some of those higher figure salaries that everybody keeps talking about with there being so much money in cybersecurity. So feel free to check out this website if you want to. There is some good information, especially with companies specifically. So if you're thinking about a specific company, you can use it to kind of outweigh what you think the actual pay is going to be for a specific position. Obviously, the more salaries that are reported by somebody or by people in those kind of positions, 
the more accurate that information is going to be. But you can also do generic terms. So like I searched for cybersecurity on this search, but you could do cybersecurity engineer, cybersecurity manager, all these different positions. Career progression is really important too because you want to advance your seniority or your overall responsibility. Think about it. You want to stay in that junior role forever? Of course not. Think about your team at work and how that hierarchy exists as you consider these questions. Have coworkers been there for a while? You might have team members on your team that have been there for several years, and honestly, they're probably not going anywhere. That matters because if they're more senior than you, you might not have an opening at that next level anytime soon. This might vary by the industry because certain industries will keep people longer than others, but you have to consider this factor. Is there planned expansion or growth? Sometimes departments are either growing rapidly or they have growth that's right around the corner. For example, if you're gonna be adding five to 10 individual contributor roles in your department, that's probably gonna open up either a lead or a manager position. Are there significant deficiencies in an area in your department? Sometimes you can actually get a company or department to create a role for you if you can show that there's enough value for something. Sometimes none of these are true and then it's just time to move on. Let's talk about flexibility and remote work now. Believe it or not, Jobs today are more flexible than they've ever been in most situations. Specifically in cybersecurity, 10 years ago, it'd be pretty challenging to find a lot of remote working positions for a lot of reasons, including the sensitivity of information that you have access to, if you need to respond quickly to an incident, and just overall best practice is to not allow these highly sensitive accounts to access the network remotely. Given what's happened over the last few years, workers have really started to resist being in the office full-time, if at all. This has drastically opened employers' eyes to allowing remote workers. I'm also gonna tell you right now that there are jobs and industries that are probably not gonna change because of the sensitivity of the work that you have to do, but you have to weigh the pros and cons of that situation. Also, some people prefer remote work and some people hate being at home and they want that face-to-face -face interaction. I still think that people brand into the industry are gonna struggle finding remote work because there's things that you still need to learn. And honestly, if location doesn't matter, these jobs are gonna be highly competitive. Finally, what about company culture? Have you ever walked into a business and said, I would love to work here, or I would absolutely hate to work here? Company culture is gonna vary based on a lot of different things, the size of the company, the industry, and the overall leadership. You have companies like Google who are willing to give employees meals and all these other services, and then you have other companies who aren't even gonna give you free coffee. If you get a chance to work at several different types of companies, you'll actually start to learn what you enjoy and what you like in an employer, and then you'll have a better idea going forward. I'll also tell you up front that if you don't want to feel like a corporate drone, don't go work for a big company. Or if you want some more structure, go to a bigger company and don't go to a small company. Okay, I'm sure you're ready to hear about why I quit, so let's talk about it. Now, I've been in a new position after this position for a while now, and one of the biggest things for me was career progression. You aren't always going to have positions that open up in your company that are going to provide additional experiences or skills that can be beneficial in your career, and sometimes you just have to make a change. I found that in a lot of cases, money isn't always the issue once you start getting past that six-figure amount. Obviously, more money is great, but other things start to matter too, and sometimes they matter more. Another reason that I left was because I had been in my position for several years, and from my experience with a lot of jobs, somewhere between two to five years in a specific position or role at a company will give you what you need to maximize that experience. Less than that, and you probably won't get enough, and any more than that, and you really just enjoy doing that job with that team or company. Those are the reasons that I left my job, and I really mean it when I talk about these factors in this video. You have to think about them because everybody's situation is different, and you've gotta make the best move for you. Question of the day, have you ever quit a job before? What was the reason? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we talked about the things that you should consider when you're thinking about quitting a job. We also talked about the things that I was thinking about when I quit my six-figure job. Ultimately, remember, you have to make the best move for yourself and don't let others influence your decision if you think it's the right move. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description for more training and resources, and I'll see you next time.